Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm just gonna talk about myself. <laughs> I know how dumb that sounds, but I had a few people ask me how I became a barber, so I'm gonna just give you a little introduction to how I became a barber and why I love doing this. When I was a teenager, I used to go to um, one of my friends, she, her and her family owned a barber shop in town. This was in Dallas. Uh, her barbershop was in like Mesquite slash Pleasant Grove area. So I used to go and hang out at her barbershop slash salon um, with her family. So I would see them cutting hair and dressing how they wanted to. They'd go in there looking cute and nails done, everything done and enjoying what they do. So it really made me want to do the same thing. Okay, so I did write down some questions that people have asked me. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just jump right in and start answering some of them. Um, the first one is, sorry. Uh, how many years have I done hair? I started off actually as a cosmetologist and I've been doing that for about eight years. I decided I wanted to be a cosmo thinking that I was gonna learn how to fade. Didn't, I didn't realize that cosmetologists and barbers are two different things. So whenever I went to cosmo school, I thought they were gonna teach me the, the faith and stuff like that, and that was not the case. It wasn't until I went out on my own after cosmetology school that I learned how to fade. Um, it was really just practicing on friends, family, um, some of my husband's coworkers. Um, I do like free haircuts or five dollar haircuts just to get the practice in. Once I got the face up to par, then I went ahead and um, enrolled into barber school and decided to um, further my career and learn the straight razor. So really, the only thing that I learned that was different between Cosmo school and barber school was the straight razor. So with Cosmos, you can do the wax, and with uh, barbers, you can do straight razor. So I have a few key points um, how to be successful in a male dominated industry. First, I want you to be confident in everything that you do. Second, don't be ashamed if your haircut isn't as great as the other people that have been, been doing it for 10, 15 years. Your, your clientele is going to build up, but so is your talent. Your talent is going to work its way up to where it needs to be. Third, if you're a female, I want you there from the time you open or the time the shop opens to the time it closes. Being in a male-dominated industry, you have to grind harder than what guys do. And the same goes to guys. If you're trying to build up your clientele, be there when the shop opens. Be there when it closes. Take a few after-hour appointments. I still, till this day, do after-hour appointments. So another thing I want to touch base with is surround yourself with like-minded people. Um, let me just go ahead and break that down for you and what I'm talking about. If the shop that you're working at, um, if those, those people aren't supportive of you or what you do or try to help you improve your haircuts or give you continuing education or anything like that, you might want to look into going into a different barber shop that does offer that stuff. If there's something that I can tell a fellow barber or student is strive to do your best. Um, no matter how shitty your haircut is or how much of a beginner you are, as long as you have that confidence to keep striving to do better and to, to do more, um, that'll take you a long way. I think there's no better satisfaction than turning your client around in that chair and then seeing their hair for the first time in a long time uh, the complete transformation I live for that and for all my barbers that have been barbers for a while and don't feel that joy or excitement anymore on cutting hair take a break off take a week off and then go back full strength and knock out all those haircuts you're gonna wind up loving your job again um, you definitely do need time away from the shop so that that way when you get back, you feel accomplished and excited to cut hair again. As far as building your clientele goes, 
be consistent on your haircuts. Take your time with it. If you're new, take that hour if you need to. I do mine every 30 minutes to make sure that I guarantee a really good haircut. Um, I don't like to do it any less than that. Sometimes if they're my regulars, I will. But for the majority of the time, I do 30 minute haircuts. And definitely be on time for your appointments. I definitely try to strive to have all of my appointments done by the certain amount of time that I I told the other person. So if I schedule one for three till 3.30, at 3.30, I want to be done with that haircut and getting my next client in. I don't like for people to have to wait for me because if they want to wait, they might as well just go into a walk-in shop and wait. So I'm strictly appointment only. I think a big part of being successful is being positive too. You can't be negative and then uh, expect positive clients or positive stuff to happen in your life if you're bringing all this negativity into your life. So get rid of any negative people in your life. Only surround yourself with positive people. So let me just tell y'all a little story real quick. When I first started cutting hair at strictly just dye hair, I went into a barber shop. It was eight of us total. Um, I was the only girl there, all the rest guys. So what they made me do is they didn't believe I could cut hair to begin with. So they had one of the guys that worked there go on the chair and I had to cut them in front of the whole barber shop. This was clients, barbers, everybody stopped what they were doing to watch the haircut. No pressure there, right guys? <laughs> So I went ahead and did the haircut and they, the two owners called me to the back, told me right there, right then and there that I had the, the job, you know, that I could rent that booth out. They had never worked with a girl before, so they just assumed that all girls could not cut hair, you know what I mean? So I was there to prove them wrong. So I'm not going to lie, it has been very difficult being a lady barber or a female barber in the male dominated industry so it was pretty rough whenever I first started um, I used to sit at the shop a lot for long hours not having any clients everybody goes through that so once you start slowly developing your clients um, it'll get better so sometimes at the barber shop I used to work at I'd get guys that would go in as walk-ins and I try to tell them like hey come on I can get you in my chair and they'd be like no I'm good um, I'm waiting on one of the guys so I had to deal with stuff like that being a female barber um, I do want to add that I am thankful for the barber shop that I did work at because I did learn a lot from those guys and whenever I did work there we were like a close little family you know um, it definitely was different working in a barbershop compared to a salon. So it was a bunch of like barbershop talk, people washing around, um, just a lot of hanging out. And I definitely recommend um, if you haven't worked in a barbershop, definitely try it. Uh, see if that's what you like, the whole barbershop feel. Right now I have my own little shop now. And my next video will probably be barbershop tour of my little shop. Once there, I, that's when I decided to advertise. So what you wanna do is not so much advertise your haircut. Of course people wanna see your work. So you do wanna advertise that, but they wanna see the person behind the chair too. Um, they wanna see the person that's doing the haircuts. So what I did was I went ahead and advertised myself, advertised my haircut. So I post a lot on all kinds of social media. Instagram, now YouTube, Facebook. I mean, I'm, I'm out there on all of my social media outlets. And a little secret, I did wind up um, purchasing t-shirts, stickers, um, buttons, pins, all kinds of stuff before I even had a, a big clientele. But the small clientele that I did have that were my regulars, I would hand them that stuff for free. And guess what that would do? That would uh, basically open up another opportunity for advertising. So they take it to their work, their coworkers would see, so then they want to book an appointment. Another thing I want to touch base on is how you present yourself at work. You want to go to work and make a statement. Nobody wants to go into a barbershop 
with the person's wearing sweats and stinky breath, didn't brush their hair. You want to go somewhere that they actually take pride and time to do themselves, like curl their hair, do their makeup for girls. Guys, you guys can put product in your hair, brush your teeth, dress nice, and that way, the, the way you dress, the way you are and present yourself is the type of clients that you're going to attract. So if you don't care, then you're going to get those clients that don't care, that show up late, that cancel last minute. You don't want that type of stuff in your shop or if you're renting a chair, you don't want to have to deal with clients like that. So if you guys haven't already, um, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, all under Abby Girl the Barber. Alright you guys, so we reached the end of my video. Um, until next time, bye!